Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested chains I'm a prisoner no more my fitting was a ransom he faithfully he canceled my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested and my life rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand that's when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over me Welcome, friends, to Holy Week, Maundy Thursday. This week has great value to me as I remember the things that have taken place throughout these days. Tonight we come to remember Jesus and his final meal and some of the things that he did with his disciples to set a good example for them on how they should live their lives. So tonight I'm going to read a scripture lesson from John 13, selected verses. The Bible says this, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world 
and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know how now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. And he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. But I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for this time this evening when we can gather here in this reverent place in your house to remember the ways in which you did set example after example for your disciples. Tonight, Lord, may we receive an example of how we are to live as your disciples. May we grow in grace. May we grow in love. May we prepare ourselves now for the great Easter resurrection. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Knowing that Jesus only had a few days left, part of me wonders just what he was thinking. Why wouldn't he call for his favorite meal? Why wouldn't he say, let me spend some time with some of my best friends? Why wouldn't he think to himself, let me spend some time with my family? No. Jesus washes feet. The disciples were no doubt shocked and amazed when Jesus took up the basin and the towel and began to wash their feet. You see, he was their master. He was their Lord. And foot washing was something that masters just did not do. Foot washing was a lowly task. Not many people want to deal with another person's feet. People's feet get really dirty. They get calloused and cracked when they walk around wearing sandals. For Jesus to wash his disciples' feet 
It was the greatest act of hospitality and service we could ever find. Before this pandemic, my wife enjoyed a good pedicure. She liked to go and have someone work on her feet. And for so long, she was after me. And she would say something like, you need to go and get a pedicure. It would feel so good to your feet. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, when pigs fly, not a chance. I know when I go to my good doctor, he always asks, how are your feet? Any problems with your feet? Any swelling around your feet? I'm happy when I can report to him that my feet are fine. I certainly don't care for someone doctoring my feet. They probably don't always smell the best, and they're not always callous at times and dry, and probably the home of a few warts. So there's just something about that washing of feet. Peter shared his sentiments, and probably yours. He was quick to tell Jesus, he was quick to tell his Lord, you will never wash my feet, not these. You see, Lord, these feet have been encased with mud. They've walked the riverbanks. They're tired from walking the dusty paths from house to house. These feet of mine, Lord, have been in wonderful situations, and they've been in some not so great situations. But still, there was Jesus with his water and his basin and his towel. And he knelt down in front of every one of his disciples and washed their feet, stink and all, callous and all. Jesus had a reason for concentrating on foot washing these last days of his life. Jesus was trying his best to set a last-ditch example of how it is his disciples should live in the world after he's gone to be with the Father. When he was done, he told them this. He said, I'm setting an example for you. You should do as I've done. Jesus called these fellows from chicken farms and working with the smell of dead fish to another job. As Jesus called them, he wasn't calling them to a higher status, but to a status of service. Jesus' whole intent of the evening was to teach his disciples a new way of living after he bid them goodbye. Listen to these promising words again that Jesus shares with us. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. What a great, to me, dear friends, there could not have been any better parting words to leave with his disciples. Wow, that's an amazing statement to leave people who are in charge. For some reason, Peter thought he had everything figured out. He even said with an anxious voice, Jesus, don't wash my feet. Not just my feet, Lord, but wash my head, wash my hands, cleanse my whole body. This is what I'm asking of you, my sweet Lord. There's a story about an army chaplain and his wife many years ago who were expecting a baby. And this story took place, and this family was expecting this baby back before maternity technology was that advanced. They had set up their little nursery at home. They had advertised that their baby was coming at a certain time. Things were great. And back then when the wife had her first pain, then quickly they would make their way to the hospital. And one night she developed that pain and it was time to go have the baby. 
And that army chaplain, as he was in the waiting room, back then they wouldn't, they didn't want men to go into the, into the delivery room, so he was pacing back and forth, waiting and praying, anxious. Kind of like the disciples were anxious on this Holy Thursday. All of a sudden, a good nurse walks out from the delivery room and hands that army chaplain a beautifully wrapped, pinked, pink blanketed baby girl. And he held her in his arms. And he loved her. A couple minutes later, another nurse walked out of that delivery room and handed the army chaplain a blue blanketed little boy. And he held them both and looked at them. And then he cried out, Lord, Lord, what in the world am I going to do? We cannot hardly make it now. What in the world are we going to do? How are we going to handle all this? And the Spirit of God came upon him and said, Just love them. Just love them. Just love them and things will be all right. Just love them and you'll make it. And that's the word that Jesus was trying to leave with his disciples on that Holy Thursday. There's a lot to be done. There's a lot that's going to take place. But if you'll just love these people, then great things will happen. And we know the story that is to come on Sunday. That virtue of love was manifested like it's never been manifested before when Jesus rose from the grave. Just love them. Just love them. That's the word for us. That's the good news for us during this holy week and in the days ahead. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the scripture. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to understand your goodness and mercy to us. And on this holy Thursday, this Maundy Thursday, Let us hear that message anew and afresh. Jesus saying, I have set an example for you. Go now. Go now and do likewise. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit.
stone. 